Welcome to episode 23 of Vampire Survivors like game and Unity. Time progression in the game and event system. Today we want to introduce a progression of the gameplay stage based on the in-game time on the stage. What enemy spawns and in what order and at what time. But first we need to introduce a timer to track the time since the start of the stage. So create a stage time component on the world object. This component will be tracking the time of the stage. It is actually very easy to do. Make a variable. And then in the update add time delta time in the update. Good. Let's make a timer on the screen. I will be using level text object as a basis. So duplicate it. Move time object somewhere on the screen you want to place it. Change the name. And make object for actual time numbers. Good. Select the timer object and create another new script called time UI. Where we will cache the text component. And then make public method called update time, which accept current stage time as a parameter. Inside this method, we want to convert the float time, which represents seconds since stage started, to minute second format. Calculate count of minutes since the game started by dividing the time by 60. Then to calculate seconds, we need to calculate leftovers from division by 60 seconds. Now post this time uh, value into the text object. Good. In the stage time we want to cache timer UI. And because it is on different scene, we have to do it by finding the object of this type. Send time to this timer UI. This will work, but there is a problem. If you launch game right now, you will see how seconds are just one digit. So before our seconds count reach 10 or more, we want to add simple formatting. To the to string, set it to have 0, 0 like this, which will make sure that there is always two digits, even if your seconds count is one digit. Now launch the game. Good. And let's wait and check if minutes works. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description. And join button available right now on YouTube. If you join at $10 or more, you will get access to project files on Patreon. On your gameplay stage, we want to create a scriptable object which will store the order of events which will occur on this stage. So let's create a new scriptable object called stage data. Add create asset menu so we will be able to create instance of this scriptable object. Inside we want to create a new class called stage event.
the stage event need to be serialized so we can edit it in the editor. Good. Let's make our first event. Just post message into the debug log. Add two variables float time, time at which this event will be triggered. And string message. Inside stage data, we want to make a list of those stage events. What we're going to make is a chain of events, which will be triggered one after another when stage time surpasses the event time set by you or the game designer. Now if we look into the Unity, we can make the stage data instance and populate it with events. Let's make three messages appear in our debug log at 5 seconds, 10 seconds and 15 seconds. Good. Now we need to trigger those events based on the stage time. Select the world and add and create a new component called stage event manager. This manager will manage the events and trigger them when it is time to do so. Make reference to the stage data. And because we will be triggering events based on the stage timer, cache the reference to the time. Because stage time and stage event manager are placed on the same object, we can simply use get component. We want to check the time of activation on the current event. If it is lower than current stage time, activate the event and iterate to a next event in the list of events. To do this, we need to introduce an indexer which we will use to get the current stage event. Then in update do the time check. And if it is true, post the event message. And iterate the event indexer. To make sure that our event manager will not go out of bounds of the event list, introduce an exit gate. Let's test this. Look at the time and into the console. Message should appear at the set time. Good. Now let's make it possible to create an event to spawn enemies. Today we will make the simplest enemy spawner event with simple random pattern. But we'll be expanding on this system over the course of the tutorial. Add the enemy to spawn and count to spawn into the event class. Open stage event manager. We need to reference the enemy manager so our event manager will be able to spawn enemies. Reference manager in the editor.
Now in the enemy manager we want to retool this manager to use event manager to spawn enemies. Make spawn enemy public, so event manager will be able to call it. And let's remove the current spawning procedure involving the timer. And then from the stage event manager call spawn enemy to spawn enemies. Use force cycle to spawn multiple enemies. Good. Now let's look into the stage data and set the necessary data. For now enemy reference does nothing and enemy spawner will spawn enemy which is reference to him instead of stage data. We will expand on this in the episodes to come. Let's test this. Good. Our enemies are spawning according to set data stage event. Let's clean our road folder because it's start to get a little crowded. So move your uh, UI scripts into the scripts UI folder. Move scripts just into the scripts folder. Move prefabs into prefab folder, but because it's a UI type prefabs, let's move them into separate folder. Good. Special thank you for support uh, to Mitchell Golden, This Old Hajdu, Andrew Vilong. Thank you everyone. See you in the next episode.